Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. In this video, I'm going to do a real short, quick start on using the Entity Component System. I'll show you how to spawn something and how to move that object around and have it render on the screen. I've got a little sample here with about 100,000 tacos flying in random directions. You can see them kind of coming right at me. But we're going to start off with something simple with a cube, and then you can just swap in whatever mesh you want. So let's get started. Okay, to make sure that we cover all of the important steps, I've set up a blank, brand new, empty project. We're using 2018.1 F1. I think any version, this or newer, should work fine. The first thing that we need to do, though, is go into the actual folder. So hit Show in Explorer, and then we need to go to the Packages folder, and we're going to need to edit this manifest.json file. So I'm going to open it up in an editor real quick. Here we are with the file. You can see it's nice and empty. And what we need to do is replace the contents here with all of this. So I'll have a link to this manifest.json file. You can just grab it, copy it, and paste it right in. But it's just a common file. It's also up on the, um, the ECS page. So here I'm just going to copy the contents, paste them into this one, and save. Click back over to Unity. And you can see it already says preview packages in use. We should see a jobs menu pop up in just a second. And then we're going to need to make one other little change. All right, it's done. Now you can see the error at the bottom just says that expression body members cannot be used because not part of the C Sharp 4 language specification. Now, if you don't have this issue, that's great. But if you do, you need to go into project settings and player. And you need to make sure that your scripting runtime version is on the .NET 4X equivalent. And that's going to force you to restart Unity. It's fine. Go ahead and do that. Let it, re be ah, let it reload. And then we can get to coding. All right, my editor has restarted. And we're ready to go. So the first thing I need to do is just create a new script. So I'll just right click, go create. And we'll make a cube spawner script. Open that thing up. Now this script doesn't necessarily have to be a mono behavior, but we're gonna leave it as one just to show that we can do it either way. I'm gonna clean up the formatting real quick. Just hit Control K, Control D, and then we're gonna add in a couple private fields. So we need a private static entity manager, and then I'm gonna have to hit Control period and add the using statement for that, and I'll just call it entity manager. And then we also need a mesh instance renderer. This is what's gonna be used to actually display our pizza or cubes or whatever we put in there. So do private static mesh instance, whoops, instance renderer. And I gotta add another using statement, unity engine.rendering. And I'll just call this cube renderer. Now we're gonna create an initialize method. So I'm just gonna make a public static void initialize. And in here, we're just going to set up the entity manager and set up a archetype for our cube. So we're going to say entity manager equals world dot active dot get or create manager entity manager. Just like that. So we're just creating or getting the entity manager for our active world. And then we need to create a cube archetype. Um, oh, I actually need to create a field for this. So let's do that. So private static entity archetype. And we'll call this cube archetype. There we go. Now we need to define this. So in the initialize, we'll just say that equals entity manager dot, oops, that's not it. Entity manager dot create archetype and then we need to give it the components that this is going to have what this is going to do is allow us to kind of define our object or our prefab here um, so that it can be spawned at runtime by this system so we're just telling it all of the components that need to be added so the first one we'll want to add is type of and it's going to be a position 2d Let's see, 2D. There we go. And we'll need to add a using statement for Unity Engine.transforms 2D. And we could do 3D too, but I'm just doing a 2D one for now. Um, and then we're also going to want to make this thing move in a direction. So we need a heading. So we'll say type of heading 2D. So these are all comma separated, by the way. Here, let's just separate these into 
different lines. So these are all of the different components that we're going to add. And the way this thing works too, there are some systems built in that are going to automatically find these components and then act upon them so we don't even have to write the code to do that. Now you could of course write your own systems to control them, but except for this sample we're keeping it simple. The next thing we need is a type of transform matrix. This is Yep, missing a using statement, there we go. And then the final one, since again, it is moving, we need a move speed. Now it's important to note too, when you're doing this and you're going through setting things up, you if you wanna stop an object, set the move speed to zero, don't try setting the heading to zero because it'll just stop rendering and break. So go with move speed equals zero. If You'll see that part in a little bit, but if you ever get to the where you wanna stop them, don't, don't set the heading to zero. All right, so now we've got that initialize method all ready to go. But what we can do here is add in another attribute that's gonna make this automatically run without being on a mono behavior. Again, we're on a mono behavior, we could probably do this in a wake, but I'm gonna do it the um, ECS way with this attribute. So we'll say runtime initialize on load method, and then we need to give it a runtime initialize load type of before scene load. So this is gonna run before the scene actually loads. So now that we have our entity manager and we have our archetype ready, we need to create a method that's going to spawn these things. So I'm gonna just call this, uh, we'll go with public static void initialize with scene. And some of these uh, method names are just kind of taken from examples. They don't really make as much sense to me, but I'm just leaving them the way they are for now. I don't think it really matters what you name your methods here. And um, the first thing that we want to do, though, is find a reference for this cube renderer. Now, if we're on a mono behavior, we could technically just make this a serialized field, get rid of all this static stuff, and uh, do it that way. But in the examples, they're just finding it in the scene by name. So we're just going to do that to keep it simple and semi-match the examples. Remember that you can always change this over and just do a reference if you need to, or if it makes more sense for the way you want to set your thing up. But let's do it the way that um, the way that the examples do it at least. So to do that, we'll say cube renderer equals, and then we need to get the um, the actual mesh instance renderer from the object. So to do that, we'll say well, let's see, we need to get the component. So we'll do game object dot find object of type, and we'll say well yeah mesh instance renderer components because we only have one in the scene there's only ever going to be one but then we need to get the dot value sorry we don't want to get the component we want to get the value of it so this will find the object yeah and then get us the value right into the cube renderer okay so we've got that done and then the next thing is to what spawn a cube. So I'm going to create a method called spawn cube and we'll hit generate method and let's give it a start and update too. We don't need these in here. And then in this spawn cube method, this is where we're going to do the actual creating of the entity. So say entity cube entity equals entity manager dot create entity and then we just give it the archetype. So say cube archetype and now our entity is created. But we need to set up the component data because it's not gonna show up if we just do this. So the first thing we'll wanna do is say entity manager dot set component data, and then we'll give it the component. We're just passing cube entity. And then we need to create a new position 2D. Oh, and then initialize it with a value equal to new float to remember we're just setting it up in 2d right now and that here let's get rid of that and just add a using statement using unity.mathematics um, and for the values here we're just going to pass in 0, 0.0 and or here let's just do 0 comma 0 and a semicolon to end it off so here we're setting up the components or the, um, the position 2D component on the cube entity, and we're setting the value just to zero. So it's just gonna start right in the center of the world, right at zero, zero. Now I'm just gonna copy that and paste it because we need to do something for heading 2D. 
And here, remember, we don't want to do zero because if we do zero, it's going to bug out. So I'll just set the Y to a one for now. And then let's uh, paste one more time and do move speed. But the value of move speed is just a float, not a float two. So we're just gonna set it to one. Or actually, and I think it's uh, speed equals one. So create a new move speed, set the speed field of it to one. And the final thing that we need to do is add our renderer. So to do that, we say entity manager, this one's slightly different, dot add shared component data. And then we give it a cube entity and the cube renderer. And I think with that, let's see, get rid of those extra using statements at the top. I think with that, we are all done. We should be able to now get back into the editor, set it up and spawn our cube. So let's go back over here. Remember, we need to create something that um, has the, what is it, the mesh instance renderer component on it because we're gonna be finding that in the scene so that we have a prototype to spawn for our object. So to do that, I'm just gonna go game object and let's just create a empty game object. And then we'll call this a uh, cube prototype or cube renderer, call it cube renderer. And then we need to add in a couple components. So we need to start searching for instance, you'll see it, mesh instance renderer component. And we add that, the game object entity should automatically get added to it. And then if you expand out the serialized data, you'll see we have a field for a mesh and a field for a material. Now in this project, we don't even have a mesh imported, but if I hit the little search box, you'll see that we have the primitives available. So I just pick cube. And then we do need to create a material. So just right click in the project area, hit create and choose material. And I'm just gonna call this green and we'll set the color to green. And then we're going to attach it to the cube renderer right here in the material area. And save, and I'm gonna hit play and we should see an error. Let's see if it happens. Oh, no error yet. Oh, that's because we're not calling our initialize. So the initialize with scene method it isn't being called. So I'm just gonna copy this one right here on line 14, the before scene load one. We're gonna paste it, but we're gonna change it. It's not gonna be before scene load. We're gonna use after scene load. So this will call before it loads, then after it loads, this is just gonna run. Again, kind of magic. We don't really have to add anything to our scene, but let's, let's watch it in action. See if we get our error this time. There we go. Material needs to enable instancing for use with draw mesh instanced. So I just wanted to make sure that you saw that because the fix for it's really simple. You just go to the material and check enable GPU instancing. There we go, save and play one more time. And there we go, we've got a cube. It's moving off to the side, just kind of sliding around. Now let's, um, let's adjust this and spawn a couple more cubes. So say we want to spawn, oh, 100 cubes. Just say four, hit tab a couple times. Go over here and put in a 100, move that into there. Whoops, not there, right there. And now we've spawned 100 cubes, but they'd all go the exact same direction. That's not gonna be very helpful because they'll all be stacked on top of each other. So let's give them a slightly randomized direction here. To do that, we'll just say float two direction equals new float two. And we'll give it a unity engine dot random dot range. And I'll go from negative one to positive one. And then we'll do that for the Y as well. So that's the X value and then the Y. Now there is a potential issue here. The problem, if you do it just like this, is that we could, we'll end up with integer values here. So we'll get negative one, positive one, or zero. And if we get zero for both of these, with the heading, the heading will be set to zero and our objects will just stop rendering. So we need to make sure that we aren't just doing integers here. And we just put an F after each one of these ones to avoid that problem. All right, let's try it again. Let's hit play. Oh, wait, I didn't actually use my new randomized direction. So now we're gonna get 100 cubes all going at the same exact place. And let me show you where you can see that too. If you go to a window and entity debugger, oh, let's snap this down here. You can see that we actually have 100 entities here. I can click on the entities to see some data on them, see their 
the value of their transform matrix. Um, they have mesh instance render more more valuable. Though I think it's like the transform stuff with the positions and then the uh, the heading right there and the move speed. So you can kind of debug these things. You can also click on the systems like the move forward 2D system. It's running with a hundred entities in it. This is why the object is moving on its own. It's these built-in systems that just automatically move your objects for you or render them for you. And you can see kind of a, a quick list of ones that are in here, or at least ones that are active in here. If we switch over to use some 3D stuff, we'll have a transform system and a move forward system, I think it is. Oh, yeah, it's this one right here. So this one you can see uses non-2D versions of things. All right, so let's stop playing. Let's go back into the code real quick and let's just pass in that direction for the heading 2D. Save that one more time. Come back into the editor, hit play, and we should end up with 100 cubes moving at random directions. There we go. If we go to the scene view, you can kind of see they're just splitting out into random directions. Um, in fact, I think what I'm going to do is go to the scene view right here, stop playing, grab my main camera, hit Control shift f and save it so that I have it right at that point. Now if I hit play, I should get an, a slightly better view of all the cubes coming out. And now let's just crank up that number of cubes. So now let's go do... 100,000. Come back in, hit play. Now this may take a, a little bit of time to start up depending on how fast your system is. As you can see it was relatively quick there, but we are doing a loop 100,000 times, so it could theoretically slow down just a little bit. All right, there we go. We've got 100,000 cubes all spawning and they're so close to each other, they just kind of look like one big cube with rough edges right now. So let's swap these out with something else. Let's just replace the model real quick. To do that, I'm going to go into the asset store and I'm going to just grab that food pack again. So you go to, was it under 3D models, food and free? Yeah, this free food pack right here. This one was perfect. So I'm going to import this package in. We'll grab the whole thing. And then we're going to just do a quick replacement of our cube with some object in here. I already did tacos. Maybe we'll grab uh, pizzas or pineapples or something. So to do that, we'll just go back over to our cube renderer and we'll go to our project view. Expand this out. Go down to the meshes section. Um, yeah, let's go with pizza. Pizza is always good. So I'm going to expand out the pizza object and I need to grab the mesh right here, the child, and assign it to the mesh of the cube renderer serialized data. I also want to replace the material. So I'm going to go to the materials folder and grab the food fresh one and drop it in there. Now, if I hit play, let's see what happens. You can expect it's not going to work. We got an error. And again, it's just the error that, hey, you need to check enable instancing. So good. Let's go back there. Let's select the food, enable GPU instancing, hit play, and let's watch what happens. Still nothing. And now I think that the reason for that is just this shader. But if I just switch it over to the standard shader, make sure enable GPU instancing is on, it seems to work fine. So there we go. We hit play. And now we've got 100,000 pizzas flying out. Oh, pretty cool, right? So like I said, this is just going to be a quick sample. I think I already went on longer than I was planning. But if you're interested in ECS stuff, just drop a comment below. I plan on doing a lot more videos on the subject, uh, going into more complex features and functionality, building out systems and all that kind of stuff. But I want to make sure that people are interested. But this should be enough to get you started. Like I said, I'll link to the manifest file down below so you can go grab it. And um, I'll also just drop the source code that I have for this project below so that you can try that out too. And I also, before I end this, I just wanted to point out one thing. With these initialized things, we don't have to do it this way. You can also, like I said, do this in on enable or any other thing that you want to kick off. Remember though that if you're spawning 100,000 or something, you probably don't want to do that at runtime because it's going to be slow. It's going to give a little bit of a hitch. But you know, you can do these in on enable, on start, or whatever. And it seems to work just fine. All right. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends. And again, let me know in the comments if you're interested in more ECS stuff or if you have questions or just comments or suggestions on this stuff. All right. Thanks again for watching.